already. Uh, before I begin, I'd like to offer our, our healing thoughts to our Seattle police officers uh, who were uh, wounded yesterday. I spoke with uh, Seattle Police Guild uh, President Kevin Stuckey yesterday, expressed uh, the fond wishes and hopes for their recovery, speedy recovery uh, from 7 million Washingtonians. We are all pulling for them, and we thank them for their duty. As you know, the 2017 uh, legislative session is scheduled to end uh, on Sunday. Unfortunately, the legislature has not been able to reach agreement on the budget and has yet to begin negotiations that will be required to reach the eventual budget. Uh, this job cannot wait, and it is my intention to call the legislature back at 10 a.m. Monday for a special session to get this job done. It is most disappointing that the state of Washington and the people of this state are in this position again. We know none of the budgets that have been proposed so far, the Republicans, the Democrats, or mine, will be the final go-home budget. The go-home budget will by necessity be a compromise among all three. But for this to happen, for the people of the state to have what they need, Legislators need to talk, and they need to trade offers to resolve the entire budget of the state of Washington. This morning, Senate Republicans told my team that they are willing to negotiate on the McCleary decision, and uh, that's fine, but they did not agree to negotiate on the full operating budget of the state of Washington, which is necessary for the functioning of this state. We can't do one without the other. And insisting on doing this approach will only lengthen the process. I heard something recently said about budget negotiations. I read Senator Rossi said, quote, it's kind of like fishing. You've just got to be patient, close quote. That's the uh, lassitude and the attitude that has got us into this position. Unfortunately, Senate Republicans view holding out as a strategy, waiting as a strategy, refusing to negotiate as a strategy. They look at it like it's recreation, sitting in the sun fishing. This is serious business. The people of the state need a full budget. They need an education budget. They need a mental health budget. They need a full budget to service the needs of the state of Washington. We've seen this story before, unfortunately. Two years ago, the Senate Republicans refused to negotiate and brought us actually to the brink of a government shutdown at the end of June. And four years ago, when the House of Representatives did pass a revenue package, the process did not move any faster. We all know uh, this isn't how it works. We saw that with the transportation package. When legislators only voted on revenue after they successfully negotiated what they were going to be voting for, for the package of investments and spending. Our students, our teachers, and our families deserve better. They deserve legislators to do their job. And their job starting Monday is to negotiate sincerely and creatively with a spirit of compromise to get this job done. And we expect them to do it. Education funding is the top priority this session. But there are obviously other significant budget items that remain to be worked out between the parties. They include mental and behavioral health, where we have critical needs. They include funding for early education, for state need grants and the state's collective bargaining agreements to keep our hospitals open and our state patrol on the job. I expect legislators will continue to work on other issues during this special session. And as long as they get the job done on education, they should also continue working on those. Now, I do want to point out that the legislature has produced some good results for the state of Washington this year on a bipartisan basis. 
Just last night, we had two late-breaking successes on uh, driving while under the influence penalties and on gun safety. Legislators uh, have passed the Real ID Act, which is incredibly important, along with bills related to distracting driving, which I have been very, uh, very passionate about. They've allowed 12-month refills of birth control. So there's been some good things come out of this session already. So we know that legislators can come together. They can get hard things done when they negotiate. So now legislators need to come together to pass a budget that amply funds our schools while protecting Washingtonians and all the other important services that our families depend upon. So I'm happy to stand for your questions. Senator, you may have seen uh, yesterday Senator Rossi introduced this bill that's essentially the, the House tax plan. And there's talk about uh, Republicans possibly changing the rules on the floor today to, to bring that <clears throat> package to a vote in the Senate. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I think it's a symptom of, a, of, a, uh, of an attitude that is not going to get the people of the state what they need, which is a negotiated resolution. This is not a time for uh, stunts. It's not a time for uh, 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 just statements of intent. It is not helpful. It is not entertaining. And it is unproductive. Uh, we know the Senate Republicans uh, are... Uh, are not on the same page with the House regarding revenues. They don't have to pass bills to let us know that. We know that the parties are going to have to compromise. They don't have to pass bills on the floor of the Senate to do that. We know two things with absolutely certainly, and I can save the Senate a lot of time on this. The House budget won't pass today in the Senate, and the Senate budget today won't pass in the House. Now, that's pretty obvious. Both sides are going to have to move towards another. And both sides are going to have a responsibility to move to, towards one another. Unfortunately, at the moment, we only have one side willing to start that negotiation process. We need two sides to do that. So uh, I would say I'm not, uh, I'm more than um, disappointed if, in fact, that's what happens on the Senate floor what, today. What's the follow-up on Rachel's thing? What's, you know, if the Senate says, Heck, we've got a new tax plan. We they opt to vote on it in the House, which essentially basically means they just make it public because it has no because it's just an, another initial bargaining position. What's what's wrong with the Senate voting on it in the context of uh, just saying? We changed our mind. We're going to throw Plan B at you. Uh, John, I may have uh, misunderstood, and, and I hope I didn't answer the wrong question that Rachel asked. Are, are you suggesting the Senate's going to vote on a, a new budget today? Is that what you're suggesting? I don't know. I have heard new tax plan, and I have heard changing of rules, and right now I have no idea well, well, that's they, were vote, they were doing this to vote down the House plan. That's what the governor is referring to, what I thought. Oh, okay. That right. is what is I, that, right? that is correct. Okay, that is that's what not I how I, th okay, yeah. I misspoke. I've heard it differently. Got it. I'll shut up. No, 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 no. <laughs> you cannot get them to negotiate on the budget. <clears throat> what, what are your options? Well, let's be clear. The legislators have some responsibility here. They have responsibility to negotiate. The House has accepted that responsibility. They have accepted, uh, by, by necessity, they're going to have to compromise. They've recognized that. The Senate has not accepted that responsibility. And uh, they need, both sides need to accept some responsibility here. I, I want to come back to where I started on this. Both sides are going to have to move fairly dramatically in order to reach an agreement here. Uh, but you have to have two sides to dance. So so far, only one side's been willing to dance on this, and we need that. It's, it, it, it's, it's simply necessary. Now, I'm doing everything I can humanly imagine to do, uh, you know, short of waterboarding, to get these folks to negotiate. But the Republicans have refused to date. I'll continue to encourage them. I'll continue to try to make it easier for them. I think that I am trying to help them by telling them today 
House is going to have to compromise. The House is going to have to drop some of their ideas and requirements. Uh, I will have to do the same thing. All of us will have to reach a compromise, and I think that's a sign of good faith, and that's what we need in these negotiations. What specific uh, policy um, suggestions do you have to lawmakers on each side of where they can move toward each other's compromise? Well, I, you know, I, I mean, I've put, rolled out a budget, right? So I have made some proposals on this. Beyond that, I'm not going to say a lot. I will say this. Uh, there are two things, fundamental things, that, that I do believe will be necessary to a resolution. One, a satisfaction of the McCleary decision in providing for the educational needs of our kids, which means very substantial increased uh, uh, funding, which will require some new revenues. Both sides have agreed to that to some degree. Uh, and it will also require some changes to the local levy. Um, my budget has done both. The House has done one of those things, which is to increase educational funding. The Republicans have done one of those things, which is to limit local levies. My budget has done both. I would suggest at some point we will have to have some version of both. run other bills and address other issues other than education during a special session. Is there anything that you'd be looking for for them to pass that would be a priority for you during a special session outside of education? Well, I've budget? got a, a lot of priorities, but I, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to limit my comments to this budget. That's the focus right now, and I just don't even want to give distractions at this point. The, the need is so telling, so obvious, and so constitutionally an imperative. And time is important on this. Look, we have a mental, we, we have Western State Hospital. We're still rebuilding the hospital. We need to continue that process. Uncertainty about that reduces our ability to recruit. We still need to recruit more people there. So this is job one. I want them to focus on it. Governor, transit advocates say cutting car cap fees, cutting revenues to sound transit betrays the will of the voters, and they have asked you to veto any such bill. Will you do that? Well, I have to see, uh, you know, what the legislature produces. But what I have said, and I continue to believe, we have two things that we have to, uh, that I believe are appropriate this year. Number one, assure that we maintain a fiscal foundation, which will allow the will of the voters to be to be fulfilled, which means building light rail from Everett to Tacoma in a timely fashion and getting that job done. We should not do anything that's going to jeopardize that or weaken that. But I do believe it's possible to have some. Uh, changes to reduce uh, the, the concern about some of this sticker shock. So I will look with care to make sure both of those things are accomplished and make sure that they are. And more, more broadly, would you just speak to the frustration of voters with yet another special session, yet another legislature deadlocked at the last minute on budget concerns? Um, it's a long line be, uh, in the state of Washington of those who are frustrated by uh, uh, this refusal of the Senate to negotiate, but I'm first in line, and everybody else is behind me. So that's what I'll have to say about that. I haven't looked at it in detail. I can't answer that question. Yes. Passed on, I think, about $150 billion budget. They were six days late. How, how do you explain to Washington voters why when with a $40 or $45 billion budget, it's going to be a 30-day special session. It's going to be more than six days late. They can do it in New York. Why not in Washington? I read they had eight Democrats in the coalition that runs the state Senate in, in, uh, in uh, New York. Maybe you ought to send them out here. We'll find out. Governor, at this point, uh, your strategy and your involvement has been to meet with caucuses individually throughout the regular session, and your folks have not been at the table during the McCleary talks the last month, uh, as they were during the task force. Do you intend to change that and try to begin five-corner negotiations or meetings with the leaders on a regular basis and get involved more deeply with the McCleary conversation? If we think it will be productive, yes. We are perfectly happy to be of assistance. We were finally uh, successful in June when the parties finally have shown willingness to negotiate. But you have to have some willingness to negotiate in order to be successful in that regard. I will be happy to go to any of these meetings as often as that they're possible to do. And if I find they're productive and they find they're productive, we will do that. Anything else? Okay, thanks very much.